So yesterday's Destiny 2 reveal stream was absolutely insane and with it, it ushered in the prologue season to Destiny 2's The Witch Queen, which is season 15, season of the lost. Welcome back my friends for another video here on the channel. Today I want to talk about season 15, season of the lost and uh, things that have changed in the season. Uh, really quick though, first I I'm really curious, let me know in the comment section below. How many of you are either new to Destiny um, and are, that are just either, you know, coming into Destiny or maybe um, you're, you're starting to grow an interest in it from the, the reveals that were, were shown off uh, yesterday um, or uh, are a returning player, uh, one or the other? Let me know how many of you guys are. I'm really, really curious. Or if you've been with, you know, Destiny the whole time or if you take, you know, taken you know maybe a couple months off or a few seasons off or whatever i'm curious where everybody's sitting at with the game how many new people are there are or maybe people that played the game maybe really early on and, and they kind of quit and then they maybe maybe the reveals kind of got them back in uh, because i have a few friends that actually they haven't played actually since destiny one even some of them and they they got interest again and they've actually been grinding destiny again ever since the reveal um and uh, even my own wife actually showed an interest in, in jumping into Destiny who uh, never really fully got into it in, in the past. So I'm, I'm kind of curious if there's more people like that. So let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I don't want to waste any more time. Just wanted to kind of say that real quick. Also, if you are new to the channel, I do a variety of gaming content, but Destiny is always a huge part of... of of kind of my uh, my core when I when I first started this channel it was primarily Call of Duty and Destiny so I will always be coming back to content to create for both of those games but it is a variety channel I talk about all kinds of games I play all kinds of games you're gonna see lots of plays walkthroughs guides you're gonna see gaming news of all sorts uh, so keep that in mind but um, if you are a Destiny fan um, I will always come back to Destiny as well and that will always be a huge p portion of my, the content I produce on the channel So anyways, just want to get that out of the way too. Anyways, moving on forward now that I've ranted for two minutes I'm sorry. I really apologize um, we're, Let's talk about the patch notes because there's a lot of different stuff. There's ability changes and there's uh, different stuff like that One of the big things I just want to talk about right away that I think it's pretty cool uh, and substantial and uh, I actually seen some people uh, questioning about it either in my comment section or on, or on social media is uh, the primary ammo because now primary ammo is unlimited which is super super cool um, that was kind of annoying in the past where primary ammo would run out um, and then especially if you ran out of your secondary ammo and your heavy ammo then you're like well what what do I do now you know what I mean uh, it wasn't very often that happened it was you know because primary ammo drops pretty pretty you know consistently but yeah, anyways, primary ammo is unlimited now, um, so that's pretty much for the weapons that are not really overpowered, you know, uh, th those are for kind of your, your main weapons. It's not for the, the, you know, the shotguns are secondary, for example, right? The fusion rifles are secondary. Obviously, I'm talking in a way that uh, is to explain it to maybe people that are returning to the game as well. Uh, I know a lot of you veterans already know this. Um, but anyways, moving on from that, let's just go through some of the patch notes um, because that was kind of the big thing I wanted to get out of the way first because I thought that was pretty significant. Primary ammo is being infinite. I love that. There's tri uh, trials uh, changes that are going to be coming, which I do want to talk about that uh, maybe more specifically in a different video. We can focus on that because... Um, they're going to be actually detailing that sometime later today. Uh, also today, we, we have the Gamescom stream we're going to be doing here on the channel, so there's going to be that as well, so just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so let's go through the batch notes. Vault of Glass, they fixed an issue with the Conflux Challenge. Reward chest didn't grant spoils of conquest. They fixed some issues with Last Wish, which included where player uh, revives would, place, uh, would be placed in rooms that could not be accessed during the Riven encounter. Uh, also an issue where players were served bird error codes and trying to get to the, uh, to the wall, wall of Wishes. Um, Deep Stone Crypt, they fixed an issue where players could defeat um, uh, Artrax won by attacking a fallen captain uh, well outside of the uh, playable space. Uh, they fixed uh, an issue with the Prophecy Dungeon. Trials of the Nine reprisal weapons will now drop in the Prophecy Dungeon. Uh, a couple, you know, Nightfall stuff as well. Um, uh, they said the announcement that uh, time is running out in Nightfalls and Legend Master Lost Sectors are now color-coded, depending on the player's colorblind settings. Um, so there's a couple different things like that as well that they kind of tweaked. Uh, strikes, they, uh, there's two new disadvantage modifiers that have been added to the Vanguard Strikes playlist for Season 15 only. Uh, they've also added two new seasonal advantage uh, modifiers to the Vanguard Strikes playlist. Um, there's a bunch of stuff with some of the other stuff like the Corrupted, Insight Terminus, uh, Hollowed Layer, 
different stuff like that. I'm not going to go too much into that. Again, I want to give you guys mostly the, the, the highlights of these patch notes uh, and maybe not read every single thing because we'd be here for a very, very long time if I read them all. Again, there's some Lost Sector stuff that has been tweaked as well. Uh, season 15 has a rotation of 11 Lost Sectors available on Legend and Master difficulty. Lost Sectors will be on a seasonal rotation moving forward. So that's some new stuff as well. Um, the boss of the Lost Sector, Scavenger's Den, is now uh, a boss-type combatant when playing on Legend or Master difficulty. Um, so a bunch of different stuff like that. Um, for a uh, tooltip, Legend of Master Lost Sector descriptions now list the shield elements that will be encountered. Also, Legend of Master Lost Sector descriptions have been re uh, reformatted for ease of, of uh, reading. Legend and Master Lost Sectors no longer have destination modifiers, and the following modifiers have all been removed. So Memory of a Golden Age, Memory of a Bygone Past, Memory of a Haunted Dream, Memory of a Lonely Outpost, and Memory of a Frozen Conundrum. Um, and then uh, uh, for Forlorn uh, Mias Miasma, if I'm pronouncing that right, is renamed to Voidburn. Uh, Isolated Flames is renamed to Solar Burn, and Desolate Charge is renamed to Arc Burn. So that's obviously way, way better than those kind of more complex names. Um, they also fixed some UI general stuff, like uh, an issue where the Gambit post-game scoreboard would not uh, um, uh, paginate correctly. Uh, added elements to the Vanguard subscreen in the director menu to represent the player's Vanguard reputation. Uh, when a player has an incoming friend uh, friend invites, they're indicated in orbit and director tabs by a new uh, invite indicator sh uh, shine slash shine. Um, inspect player terminology changed to inspect guardian. Um, player waypoint title uh, gilding count now shown at all times, including before the new ti uh, season's title. Uh, has been gilded. In other words, you will now see the number of times your title has been gilded, even when it reverts to purple at a seasonal reset. Uh, some season uh, or some settings kind of stuff, social settings uh, like fire team privacy invites and friend requests have uh, been moved to a sub tab on the roster. Um, invite notification settings been updated and fixed. Gamepad sprint uh, turn scale setting added. Controller ADS sensitivity modifier added, and text chat audio hide setting uh, set or text chat audio hide settings set to off by default. So really quick before we continue, I do want to talk about that the settings really quick because if you if you noticed they actually added a controller ADS sensitivity modifier so if you actually go into your settings now um, you can actually see that there is uh, a brand new uh, setting uh, they've also tweaked the look sensitivity um, so they've increased it all the way up to 20 so if you want to increase it to 20 you can uh, I'm still sitting around seven and uh, like I said ADS sensit sensitivity modifier uh, specifically for how sensitive your your aiming is when you're um, ADSing which is aiming down your sights right um, so that's all brand new that they've added as well. Now, the big thing, the really, really big thing with season 15 that a lot of people are excited about, I'm super excited about uh, as well, is crossplay. Crossplay is huge. Crossplay has finally been imp implemented into the game. Um, and that's really exciting stuff because now you can play with, you know, your, your friends across all platforms. And that, you know, Destiny's always been so huge about community. And I think the fact that they have now added crossplay uh, really brings the community together more than ever. Especially, you know, if, even if you're looking on LFG now, you can look for LFG for, for anything, right? Because you can add people from any other platform. That opens the door so much more to, you know, connectivity with, you know, Destiny players across the board. I think that's massive. Um, you know, obviously other games have done it, but for Destiny, which is so focused on community, I think that's a really good thing. So we're going to talk about that really quick. So basically, you, you have your Bungie name, um, and your Bungie name replaces your platform name. So on login, players' uh, Bungie name will be set based on the name they're using on the system they first log in on. So for example, on, on I play on PlayStation Network, which my name is the Real J Skeleton. So my Bungie name was automatically set to that. Um, so that's just kind of an example. So basically, when you go to the roster. Um, if you hover over your name, you can actually see your platform name and your and your bungee name. So it'll show your bungee name, which will be um, it'll show it like it'll say bungee name in blue, and there'll be a blue number beside it. And that number is is kind of like you you'll see um, you know in other platforms too with crossplay, right? So it'll be like your 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 name. So for me, the real J Skeleton, for example, and then it'll be a number, right? Like a four digit number. It'll be like a, a hashtag, which is actually a number sign. Um, and then it'll be a four digit number, whatever that number is. It could be like five, seven, eight, nine or something or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so when you're adding someone on, on, uh, as a bungee friend, you're going to need their, their bungee name and that little code as well. Uh, now, uh, 
on launch day, they were having a little bit of issues with the crossplay and adding friends and whatnot, uh, where you'd get like a weasel error code. But I, I think that might have been fixed now. If not, you can go to the Bungie website anyways for now, Bungie.net, and you can go to the friends tab in there. Uh, I think it's Bungie.net slash friends will bring you directly to the page you want you need to go to. Uh, and if you hit if you go to the search bar at the top right corner, which looks like it's to search the entire website, which I think it is, but if anyways, if you do that on that page on the friends page on the website, you can search for people. Uh, uh, if you just type in their 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 name and that uh, that that number that's associated to their name as well. So, um, yeah. So that's basically how you do that. So again, under the roster, there's there's uh, there's a, there's new tabs. You can either select by all players. You can view by platform players, or you can view manage invites, whether it's to send an invite or to see anyone's that you you've had. This is all also where you'll see clan invites. Uh, Bungie friend requests, fire team invites, and all that good stuff. So that's all going to be under there. And then there's social preferences, of course, at the bottom uh, as well. So yeah, crossplay. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple how it works. Honestly, uh, you'll see a logo beside people's name. Uh, it's a PlayStation logo, like a cir circular PlayStation logo if they're on PlayStation. It seems to be just a controller if they're on Xbox and uh, a keyboard if they're on PC. So that's kind of how you know which platform someone's on. They'll be to the left of their name. Um, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, I, again, that's uh, pretty much exactly how the uh, the crossplay works and uh, whatnot. Um, so beyond crossplay, we do have some other stuff, you know, regarding armor and mod changes and weapons and all that good stuff. Um, now, I actually can't, I couldn't find it specifically in the patch notes, but uh, I heard the 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 um, I heard that the uh, oh my goodness, what's the, what's the word? The Vex Mythoclast. <laughs> Uh, got buffed. I still haven't got it to drop. I've finished the raid like 10, 11 times, 12 times. It's never dropped for me yet. I'm hoping to get it soon. But apparently it's been buffed because apparently when it was first launched, the gun sucked. Um, which was disappointing because obviously in Destiny 1 it was a really good gun. Um, and I, I don't know if they buffed specifically that gun. I think it's that they, they buffed fusion rifles in general, I believe. Uh, which, of course, you know, the Vex Mythoclast is a kind of fusion rifle. It's different, obviously. It's not your charging kind of fusion rifle, but it's in that category still. So, anyways, basically it's a little bit more powerful. And apparently it's, it's more... Um, it's more viable now. It's more, you know, it's 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 a better gun to actually be able to use and uh, and all that good stuff. So, anyways, uh, <clears throat> beyond that, like I said, there's just some armor stuff. Really quick, new features. Stasis has been added as an armor type energy, along with a suite of uh, base mods that uh, continue to or sort of that use the stasis armor energy type. New combat style mods featuring more elemental wall mechanics have been added to the game. Uh, ghost mods, a new suite of ghost mods, have been added to the game that guarantee a minimum state stat value of 10 in the chosen character stat at any time you acquire a piece of armor that has random stats there's holster mods uh, this is a new type of leg armor uh, that will gradually reload stowed weapons uh, of the match uh, of the matching type over time and uh, multiple copies of holster mods of the same type will increase the rate ammo is reloaded so those are really cool new mods as well that um, I think are just a great addition uh, all in all of course like I said there's a bunch of bug fixes and stuff I'm not gonna read every single thing so we'll be here forever uh, exotic balance uh, balance changes um, They've changed a bunch of different stuff with different uh, exotics, uh, so that's such as the you know the the, the bombardiers, the graviton forf forfeit, the lucky pants, um, the precious scars, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll link the full patch notes in the description below if you want to read them all. Again, I don't want to make this video like a 30-minute video and go through every single detail. I want to give you guys at least some of the mo you know the bigger highlights for the most part. Um, you know, uh, and whatnot, but there, there's changes to that as well. I wanted to talk about, you know, mostly what is, what is also new. Uh, like I said, all primary ammo weapons now have infinite ammo, which is super exciting stuff. The controller sensitivity thing, of course, we already talked about. Uh, Trials of Osiris, we're going to have a bunch of new stuff coming to that. Uh, all trial weapons now have seven perks in each column, which previously was five. Um, so that's uh, some brand new stuff as well. Um, they fixed, like I said, a bunch of issues with different other stuff. Um, and uh, whatnot. Fusion rifles, we'll talk about that very briefly because, like I said, that, that kind of changes a lot of stuff. Um, and, and fusion rifles seem to be the meta right now. Uh, but increased PvE damage bonus uh, uh, such that all subfamilies are at 15% PvE bonus. Previously, high impact was 0% precision uh, and adaptive were 10%. 
and uh, rapid fire with 12.5%. Uh, pushed sub families further apart, adjusting charge time, shots fired per burst. Uh, with seven for all subfamilies and damage note that the base below uh, means without battery perks a charge time masterwork or the adept uh, charge time mod uh, so high impact based charge time increased from 0 0.86 uh, seconds to one second for example um, and different things like that uh, shots per burst reduced from seven to five reduced total damage per burst uh, so again there's a bunch of tweaks to, to the fusion rifles um, and uh, one out as well a bunch of different uh, exotics like the anarchy there was they reduced the total total reserve plus magazine ammunition from 26 to 16 which is kind of significant uh, they reduce the damage by 30% versus bosses. Champions are not bosses, but actual bosses. So that's, again, a significant nerf, unfortunately. Uh, even the Xenophage, they res reduce the rate for uh, fire from 120 to na uh, 90 RPM. So a significant nerf there, too. Uh, the Fighting Lion, uh, ammo increased from a lot to infinite. Uh, receives the same changes as other breach grenade launchers. Reduced base reload stat to zero. Now increases reload speed to its previous level on uh, damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. Then we get to the, the Vax Mythic class. We got details specifically on that. PVE damage bonus increased by 40%. Range increased to exceed best in class for three uh, 360 high impact auto rifles. They increased the stability. They reworked the catalyst to grant stability and damage after a kill. They increased the rate of fire from 360 to 390. They reduced linear fusion uh, linear fusion mode charge time from 820 to 530, which is same as the standard linear fusion rifles. No longer loses overcharge stacks on stow except when in linear mode. So a lot of changes to the Vex Mythic class, thankfully, uh, which I still need to get. Merciless got some. Uh, changes as well uh, updated perk to uh, account for fewer shots per burst reduce the damage penalty for increasing charge rate by 40% Yoten reduced charge time from 0 0.82 to 0 0.78 um, slightly reduced damage per shot the bastion reduced damage by 15% um, uh, now can now not quite kill a guardian with one shot in the three shot burst it fires uh increased spread angle by 10 percent increased pve damage by 25 percent uh and then sweet business now refills magazine on picking up special slash heavy ammo instead of primary so that's pretty much the exotic weapons we want to talk about those because uh those are pretty significant obviously the exotic armor as well but i think the weapons especially uh, especially a lot of these like the jotun has been used a lot you know the xenophage the Ar anarchy the, i mean all these all these exotics have been used a lot uh last season and they've kind of and even previous seasons so um you know they've tweaked a lot of stuff in that as well then we got, of course, really quick power and progression. So power bands increase. Power floor, uh, power. Excuse me. Power floor remains at 1100. The soft cap is now uh, 1270, up from 1260. Um, so to, obviously that means you know gear is going to drop, uh, you know, up to 1270 very, very easily until you need to start doing you know kind of the higher stuff, right? Uh, the powerful cap is now three, 1320, so it's up uh, from 1310, uh, so it went up by 10. So again, every season usually things go up by 10. And then the hard cap is now 1330, which is up from 1320. So again, the hard cap was uh, previously 1320 last season, and now they've upped it to 1330, um, which ironically, I only just got to 1320 uh, today at the time of recording this. So I got another 10 to go to hit that hard cap, uh, and hopefully I get that done before the end of the season. And it's going to be a long season. It's going to be six, uh, six, uh, six months, this one, because, of course, the Witch Queen got delayed. So um, I think for the most part, I mean, they made XP rewards more descriptive. You can now get a general understanding of how much XP a bony or a bony, a bounty or a seasonal <laughs> challenge will give you from its description. Um, reward tiers, smallest to largest are XP, XP plus, XP plus plus, challenger XP, challenger XP plus, challenger XP plus plus, challenger XP plus plus plus. You get the idea. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much the most of it. I mean, like I said, there's a bunch of stuff we know regarding bounties and pursuits, reputations, eververse, third person peaking abilities like stasis freeze. You know, players can now initiate breakout while airborne, uh, shorten breakout animation and camera transition, differentiated long freeze and short freeze visual treatment to make each status easier to identify. Um, 
grenade projectile of the glacier grenade now bounces off of other projectiles instead of detonating on impact stasis crystals fixed a bug in which damage dealt to your uh, own crystals was being factored into the damage dealt stat in crucible and whisper of rhyme fixed a bug with whisper of rhyme in which uh, the overshield it provided was not scaling precision damage correctly uh, and then a couple things with slide while sliding players now incur the following weapon penalties minus 20 stability plus 15 percent shotgun pellet spread 1.5 times flinch air move abilities such as shadow drive can no longer be performed while sliding um and then there's some stuff with the titan uh with the with the barricades and things like that which i'm not going to go into details because again we're going to be way here way here way longer hunter got some tweaks as well um the warlock got some tweaks i mean there's a lot again if i read every single patch note we would be here for like that would be a long video It'd be like a 45 minute video quite frankly so um, I wanted to focus on a lot of what I consider the main stuff. Maybe I missed some of the main stuff. If I did, you know, let me know in the comments section. I apologize. I will leave the patch notes down below so you can read them all for yourselves. Um, but that I think covers the most part. There is a destiny timeline now, which you can see, uh, the timeline of destiny Two. unfortunately it doesn't show the timeline of destiny one in there. Uh, but you know, anyways, and all that good stuff. So that's uh, that's the most most of the patch notes. That's most of the things that have changed in uh, Destiny 2: Season of the Lost. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Let me know if you guys want to want me to do more of these kinds of videos in the future because. Um, normally, I just kind of have been focusing on the bigger news regarding Destiny and, and other games. But if you like me to kind of go into some nitty gritty on certain games that I, you know, kind of I, I play a lot more often, like Destiny and Call of Duty and other games like that, um, I can I can do more of that content as well. But I did want to focus at least this because, you know, some of the significant changes moving into Season of the Lost. Um, and since this is a pretty big season as it's playing as a prologue to uh, the Dreaming, uh, the Dreaming City. What am I saying? It's part of the Dreaming City is part of the prologue. But what I meant is to uh, prologue to the Witch Queen. Um, you know, it's pretty exciting stuff. And again, let me know how many of you guys are returning or new. And uh, maybe I can make a video kind of going, th you know, explaining the mechanic, the, at least the, the foundational mechanics of Destiny uh, and, and the, uh, the basics, you know, like kind of the vendors and, and bounties and, and gear and uh, you know the basics of mods and uh, you know just the basics of stuff for, for anyone who's either new to Destiny or is maybe returning after a very very long hiatus, hiatus and maybe you haven't been here maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't even played Destiny 2 maybe you haven't played Destiny since the first game uh, so if there if you would like a video let me know in the comments below and, and, I'll, and I'll see how many how much you know uh, interest or would be for that depends on how many new players there are or returning players that would like a quick overview which would be stuff that would probably be obvious to veteran players that have been around for a while and maybe some of it would be obvious to you if you played destiny in the past but kind of like a summary that's a good kind of you know it's a good starting point to understand at least the foundational kind of parts of destiny you know what are strikes what a, what is the crucible what is gambit you know kind of a quick overview of all these different things in a sing singular video if that's something that interests any of you guys let me know and i can make that video um shortly but uh for now gonna wrap this one up here thanks for watching i'll see you guys soon apologize i'm super lengthy and uh let me know how you guys are enjoying season season of the lost and until the next video game on thanks for watching